This is Judith Shock, Senior Academic Developer, and you are listening to the Academy's Developing Practice Podcast. Great, it's lovely to have you with us here today, Judith, and to talk about learning and teaching and teaching recognition and um, lots of things that are close to um, my heart. But first of all, it'd be really good to um, hear a bit about you first. So could you just tell us a little bit about your professional background and how you've ended up as the programme lead um, for the postgraduate certificate in academic practice at the university? Hi, Alex. Thank you. Yeah, um, I started teaching over 25 years ago, but I was teaching in further education. Um, As part of that role, I was working um, with teaching observations with Ofsted, but back when there were seven grades. Oh, okay. A long time ago. Yeah. Um, And because of that, and then because I did a master's in education, I kind of fell into teacher training in FE. I was asked to take over the cert ed and the postgraduate courses um, Mm -hmm. at at the local college. Um, and then from that, I, I got a job in higher education, running those kind of courses, and then moved on into HE and working with higher education teacher training courses. So my, my, last, my last job um, was as head of learning and teaching mm-hmm. at a small arts institution, um, which was doing a lot of those kind of things, teacher training, um, peer observation, professional recognition, etc. So... And then I moved into this job, so it's kind of a, a logical process, really, yeah. I think. Great, so, and tell yeah. us a bit about your role here. So my main role here is as lead for the postgraduate um, certificate in academic practice. So lots of your, well, all of your, your background is um, to do with supporting colleagues with their learning and teaching development practice yeah. and, and getting recognition for that. Can you tell us um, why you've, you've stuck with that throughout your career? What... Um, kind of what gets you out of bed in the morning to support colleagues in that way? Well, when I first did my um, teaching qualification, which I say over 25 years ago, um, I did it full time. So, and I didn't think I could do it. I nearly left three times. I thought, what am I doing? Who's, who's to say I'm going to be a teacher? I, I can't do this. Um, and as I progressed through it, actually what I did think was, not only can I do this, I think, but I'd love to teach teachers because I can do it better than they can. But the point, this is, you know, a long time ago, it's very different then yeah. um, than, than, than it is now. Um, and once I got into teaching, and once I got into supporting teachers, it just became a passion. Brilliant. And we're talking here, when we say the word teachers, we're talking about people who teach in higher education, further education, th- not just in a primary or secondary oh, school. Absolutely. It's just the word that is used. And I think you'll find that, that, that even in research in higher education, when it's about te- when it's about yeah, teachers, that that is what they use. It's kind of a generic term. It has been discussed quite a bit over the years as well. We did some um, research with a group a few years ago about what they want to be called. They were teachers in higher education, whether they want to be called lecturers or oh, academics yeah. or... Um, and they really, they weren't bothered and teachers was the one that, that kind of came on top. Great. Because that's what they do. Yeah. You know, when people ask me what I do, I just say I'm a teacher because that is what I am. Yeah. So even if in our university you have a research profile, if, if you're engaging with students in some way in terms of um, helping them to develop their understanding and their knowledge of your discipline, we're talking to talking about being a teacher yeah or teaching they're teaching 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 and learning isn't it teaching learning assessment tla what you know there's so many forms that you can um discuss terminology brilliant so why do you think that gaining teaching recognition is so important um both i suppose internally and and nationally in higher education yeah i think i think it's teachers in schools have always had qualified teacher status haven't they and then maybe around 2006, six seven, um, it became something within further education where they could gain teacher status through um, QTLS, which is Qualified Teacher Learning and Skills. And then it's moved, I think, from there into higher education. So having some form of teaching recognition has become important. Institutionally, I think partly in HE because of the TEF, the Teaching Excellence Framework. Yeah. Um, not just because of... Um, what the institution gets from it, you know, it looks at student outcomes, it's obviously graded, etc. But students can look at what the TEF is saying. 
So they, it's, it's now become a competition. Mm. Students look about what, what, what the TEF is saying about each institution, um, which one has better student outcomes, which has better employability. Students have changed, I think, yeah. over the years. They've got they, you know, a lot more choice. They do. They've got yeah. more choice. They know more. They yeah. know what they're looking for. Parents are more aware of what's happening out there. Um, so that, nas- nationally, then it's a competition. Um, and it's not, I think a few years ago, if you look at some of the research, it was about, okay, I want, I want to go to, you know, I want to be taught by somebody who's got a PhD. Mm-hmm. I want to know that they know this subject. Now it's about, I want to know they know subject. I also want to know that they can teach. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's so important to me that they can teach, yes. Yeah. So the student experience and the student voice has changed things, yeah. I think. So particularly in terms of the TEF um, and getting teaching recognition, I guess it's it's written into the TEF in terms of the metrics, in terms of student yeah. outcomes, yeah. but also I, I guess it's written into the narrative around that as well in terms of how many colleagues within the institution have their... Um, recognition and, and at what level? Yes, uh, th- yeah, because you know you have to send the information to HESA, mm-hmm. to the Higher Education Statistic Agency, um, and, and again that's another competition isn't it, about which universities have got more teachers that are recognised, mm-hmm. so it's, it's for professional recognition for that go through the ultra, yeah. the experiential route, and for those who get a teaching qualification through a PG cert or a PG cap. And metrics are important. Yeah. Um, we need to, to know our metrics. We need to be able to ensure that they reflect the institution. But far more importantly is, I guess, um, that kind of wider impact that having teaching recognition has on colleagues. Um, do you want to talk to that a little bit in terms of why is it so important that um, forgetting the metrics and forgetting those kind of cold, hard numbers, why is it important in terms of um, colleagues developing in that way? I, th- I think staff or teachers that they they want to do the best they do care about their students in general the majority and i think that has got better over the years certainly in higher education um they they you know the students want a good experience and the staff want to give them a good experience and part of that is about professionalization and i think this is what happened in fe was it, it having teaching qualifications professionalized the sector so they weren't just coming from industry um, as an electrician, as a, a mechanic, as a hairdresser, and coming and teaching, they became teachers with a qualification. Right. And it changed the way that people thought about further education. Um, and I think that's happening again in HE, is that students are thinking, okay, they, you know, they care about me, they're, prof- they're professionals, they know how to teach, they've got qualification in their subject. Um, and also, it encourages the student voice. It does it encourage the student voice and ensure a better student experience overall. Great, and I guess it also develops networks across the institution of people um, to to have conversations about learning and teaching as well. So, um, in terms of the student experience, it has a, a positive impact. But also in terms of our professional experience as well of meeting like-minded people and and having those really interesting conversations about our learning and teaching practice. I get I guess this is one way to develop those conversations. Well, it is. It's, I mean, I guess it starts with um, the PG cap. So coming on a teacher training qualification, you start by meeting other people, don't you? So you've got big groups of people, and you're having discussions in the groups, and you you know what it says. You you learn as much from your peers as you do from the tutor who's in front of the group teaching them. Um, and, and a lot of those networks do continue. Mm-hmm. But not for everybody. Yeah. But I think for the majority, they, you know, as they go through the programme, they, they're, they're learning so much and they're realising the impact that it's having on their teaching and on their departments, on their faculties. Yeah. Um, and people then network across the, uh, across the institution. Brilliant. So, I mean, we've got a variety of routes to achieve teaching recognition here at Liverpool. Um, what, what are they and, and who are they for? What, what, what are the options for people? Um, one of the ones is, is the foundation of learning and teaching in higher education. So that is, it's accredited through Advanced HE, so when they complete that they can get Associate Fellow. Mm-hmm. But it's not teaching qualification as such. So they attend certain workshops that support them to achieve Associate Fellow. Right. And who would attend them? Um, so people who are new to teaching, technicians. I think they have quite a few technicians here and certainly in the institutions. They support technicians to go through that. They're instructors. 
um, research, people who are doing research. And even, I think, the last job that I had, we were supporting um, the PhD students to do it as well because they were doing some teaching alongside. Great, okay. Um, so that, so it's a, I think it's a really interesting, it's a good course, and it also then brings you into a PG cap. So I think once you've got them interested in teaching, then some of them go forward and go into the, uh, the postgraduate certificate in academic practice. So that is the main teaching qualification for higher education, even though it may be called a PG cert in other places. In, in other places. Um, so that is for people who have got less than three years teaching experience, who are, who are quite new to teaching, mm. but they have to have a substantial teaching role. Ah, right, okay. Yeah, so it's some institutions <clears throat> that change, you know, so you have a research um, contract or maybe a teaching contract, so this is something that most people with a teaching contract that would do. Because you have to have, not it's not just the teaching, it's about the support, the assessment, and um, an impact on the curriculum. Mm. Um, so that, that course is over 18 months with, with two modules. And that's a postgraduate course? Postgraduate okay. course, it's all at level 7, and that is accredited through Advanced HE um, as a fellow. Okay. A, a fellow of the HEA. So we've got foundations that's um, recognised for associate fellow, yeah. and then the postgraduate course that's yeah. longer, um, but you need to have had more experience of teaching. Which is for yeah. the fellowship, but under but yeah, but under three years experience. Because I think once you've got over three years experience, then you can do the experiential route, which is the ultra professional recognition. Okay, and that's when you just put in kind of portfolio of evidence instead. Yeah. There's no no teaching qualification. No teaching qualification with that. Um, I understand no teaching here. Um, but it's about your experience. So, I mean, I think if you talk to the advanced HE or HEA, they do say, you know, you can if if you've got the experience, mm -hmm. um, you don't need to be taught. Then obviously you can put together your application um, and apply to become either associate fellow or fellow or senior fellow or uh, principal fellow. So, what's the difference between teaching recognition and we're talking advanced HE there, aren't we? Um, compared to the teaching qualification because when we're, we're not automatically looking for both are we no most universities will ask for one or the other right although some of the teaching universities do prefer to have a teaching qualification um, I, I think the majority most of it is about the theory to practice so in the post in a teaching qualification you are taught a lot more and given a lot more support um, and it's credit bearing it's a credit, it's credit bearing course it's per, it's, right. yeah it's a credit bearing course um, so you do get 60 credits towards, 60 credits towards a master's as well if you want to progress. So you could use your 60 credits from the postgraduate certificate and progress into a postgraduate diploma. Mm -hmm. And then again, up into a master's in education. Okay. So that, that is a possibility here at Liverpool to do that. But in terms of um, the university strategy here, we're, we're aiming for teaching recognition. Yeah. A hundred, yeah, for a hundred percent. So here for a hundred percent of teaching recognition, which means either associate fellow, fellow, senior fellow, principal fellow. So it's not about having to have a teaching qualification. Okay, and we've got three routes into that: the foundations, the PG, um, cap, and also the ultra, the ultra. which is the internal yeah. scheme. Okay. And then we have the postgraduate um, certificate in global academic practice, which is a new thing that we're developing at the moment, uh, which is an online program with Kaplan and Advance HG that is hopefully going to run in around February, March. And that is international, so it is for all international students. Okay, and that would result in recognition? That results in a, um, a postgraduate certificate in academic practice and also fellow, fellowship okay. of the HEA. Great. So aside from the formal recognition then, um, why, would en why would you engage with the PG Cap? What, why is that beneficial? to the people who are, who are going through it? Besides from those who have been asked to do it institutionally. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it is in, you know, it, it's, it's, it is here and it is in most institutions now that a, a part of this is in the contract that they're offered a job and if they haven't sure. got fellowship or, or teacher qualification they will be asked to get one. It's not abnormal. Um, and so if it's under three years they will be asked to do the postgraduate certificate. Um, I think they do gain a lot from it but maybe not, don't realise to begin with um, and a lot of it is about confidence building they do build a confidence and many people who have, who go th progress through it will say and um, and I've been doing some of the oral conversations actually from the last group and they are much more confident in what they're doing 
they can um, apply some of the theories, some of the main theories now, they understand some of the theories to practice. Quite often they say they can put a name, yeah, I do that, I know what it's called now. Mm. Yeah, um, so it's updating their language as they're going yeah, through abs- it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Educational terminology, isn't yeah, it, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, they understand assessment better, they can give better feedback, uh, and also they, they, it's about supporting students. They understand how to support their students more. And I, I, I'm not, I haven't taught it here, but a part of the teaching on a teacher training qualification is talking about what does an HE student look like? Who are they now? Mm. You know, we've all heard about generation x z baby boomers all these kind of things but actually if you read more about it it's true so the generation that is here now the generation that's coming in we have to teach them differently we have to change the ways that we're doing things and only by just talking about it and discussing it can we understand um you know the differences between it that we can't just sit them in a lecture theater anymore we can't just sit them there and talk at them for an hour they're not used to that they're, you know, they're used to doing a lot of different things. They multitask, don't they? They're, they're on their iPhone, they're watching Netflix, they're doing the assignment, <laughs> they're doing yeah. that. But it, it, it's a natural progression, whether we like it or not, that yeah. they're the students in front of us. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, is that why then there's so much focus on teaching practice at the moment? Because obviously you mentioned TEF, but is the focus on teaching practice therefore as a result of the changing generation or is it just around the metrics? I, I think it's, in, in a lot of universities, it's, it's come around the metrics. It's, we must do this, we have to yeah. do this. However, a realisation that doing this and supporting teachers is making a better student experience. Mm. It has to, mm. it has to make, it does. Um, I think you can get teachers on board, you, you can pull their passion out, you can find what they're interested in, and the majority of, of teachers out there do want to do their best. You know, it's, it's what they wanted to do. And, you know, one of the things I do say to teachers when I'm on the course is once you become complacent, it's time to leave. You need to go and do something else. Mm. It's Because it's an important thing. You have to be able to do it properly. It's, 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 it's important. Which is why I'm so passionate about it and, and supporting teachers is I'm a teacher. I'm not anything else. Yeah. All the different jobs I've done and all of the extra things. And all the bits around I it. I am a yeah. teacher. That's who I am. Great. Yeah. And I'm... I'm okay with that. So can we just um, explore the PG cap a little bit more? So you said it's for 18 months for colleagues who've done around three years teaching. Or under. Um, or under. Yeah. Um, and um, can you just, so you talked a little bit about the content, which is great. So understanding students, the student experience, where students are coming from um, at the moment. They're saying that every generation now changes every three years. So we've got to keep up to date, haven't we, with where yeah. the students are at. If I think about my 14 year old now, the way she engages with technology is completely different um, to me who didn't really even have the internet to do my degree. You know, they're, they're changing all the time, so it's important we understand students. What else is there in the, in the PG cap that would um, help people develop their learning and teaching in terms of content? I, th- I think one of the main focuses of the PG cap at Liverpool is the globalisation um, and obviously the linking to Curriculum 2021, which is, you know, obviously, you know, really important throughout it. So it's embedded throughout there. Um, a part of it is about looking at globalisation and you know different institutions across the world and how we teach, um, and also a, a big part of it is also the learning theory. So some of the learning theories that you would do in schools, mm-hmm. some of the main learning theories, the schools of learning, humanism, constructivism, ex- social learning, etc., um, and how we use these to apply it to our own teaching. So the first module is, is around teaching practice as such. They also have peer observations, a couple of peer observations, um, where they can, they can observe each other, and, but it's, it's, it's developmental. It's not a tick box, an evaluation, you've done this wrong, you've done that wrong. It is, it's about a discussion, as the peer observations here at Liverpool are. Uh, so it's important to have that discussion around practice. Then they move on to the second module, which is currently um, an individual investigation, which like actual research, teacher okay. inquiry. So they look at they look at an issue, a problem they may be having, and how they can make that better. I mean, for example, a very basic one that I've not, not necessarily haven't seen here, but um, was a lecturer who taught lectures with the groups and how they could make that more interactive. How can I make this more interactive, get more engagement from my students, 
and part of the action research was um, surveying the students, um, doing a lecture and then doing a more interactive lecture, having a focus group and finding out um, which was the best way for them Lovely. Uh, and then creating that. So hopefully disseminating at the Pedred conference eventually. Yeah, and also just thinking about um, some of the conversations I've had with colleagues who've, lear- who've won learning and teaching fellowships within the university. Uh, the two uh, most recent conversations I've had both have done the PG oh, have they? and they've developed their projects that's gone on to actually yeah. win an award internally yeah. um, and funding which is related to that because of the work they did on the yeah, PG cap. That's great. Um, so two amazing pieces of work in terms of innovative practice with students that was really fostered and developed on the PG cap yeah. that has gone on to, to be developed in such a positive way. Well, it's a brilliant module and they do use that in other universities and some of the externals really wow about it because it does it can lead them further on and then from there they're you know they're building the confidence again in a different way through research and dissemination and then going on to you know publish articles and uh, you know move further on with that lovely so just thinking about um busy academics massive workload you know lots lots of pressures on colleagues in terms of um, what they need to get done week by week how do colleagues balance doing this 18 months worth of level seven study alongside the workloads that they already have I I think overall with majority of PG certs and PG uh, um, caps at the moment there is a lot of work it's a lot of assessment that probably needs to be cut down Um, so it is, it is difficult. See, it's not just about work, it's about their own home, you know, the different home life. They've got a lot of things, like you say, that they're juggling. It's, it's, it's a difficult one because they're colleagues, they're not students. No. You're in a group yeah. and they're, they're your colleagues. So all you have to do is support them. You, it, I think there's a lot of support out there um, to help them with the timings. And it's also because it's a blended learning course so there's six days over the year that they attend okay then there's other things online and through the VLE so that you know there's the support from that as well and I guess everything that they that colleagues are studying has direct relevance to their practice in the classroom so hopefully this will make their jobs easier and, and then better at what they do rather than it being something completely different to to their day-to-day it work. Does. It does. I think it's quite difficult for those who do the PG cap when they first start teaching. Right. Because they haven't particularly got anything to, to you know, to link it to. Mm-hmm. Once you've been teaching a year and then you come on to a teacher training course, PG cap, PG, whichever it is, then you start making those connections. Ah, okay, this is why I'm doing that and this is how I can do that. And it is there to support them and help them with it. Even mm-hmm. though at the beginning it seems a lot of work, by the time they get through the first module, then they're, they're understanding why and they're, they're making those applications mm. and so it's the helping them do what they're doing and yeah. make it make them, help them do it better. The timing of them undertaking that qualification then is actually really important. Well, it, it is important to them. Yeah. But when they're asked to do it, that's a different thing, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. This is, I'm, I'm just saying that from experience and from speaking to yeah. people who have done it. And the ones who have done it, like they've got a job, first teaching job, here you go, into a teaching qualification, it's very daunting. Because they don't even know the planning, the curriculum. So when you're talking about the planning and the curriculum, they have nothing to pin it to. Mm. So ideally, having a year under your belt of teaching is the better way to do it. So it's important that line managers are having that conversation with colleagues rather than just assuming the minute they hit the ground running that they they then enrol on the course. Possibly. Trying to make yeah, it work yeah. for that colleague. And see how they feel. I mean, some people will do it. Some people want to do that. And some people, you know, the benefit from, from doing them both together. But I think the majority, I think it takes... You know, you know, you're a teacher, you've been teaching, you, 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 your first class, you mm. know, it's very daunting, you don't know what you're doing for the first year, and that sounds awful, but it's true because you, you kind of, you know your subject, and even if you've done it, you know, you're making it up as you go along until you, you understand the best way to do things, or different ways to do things. Mm. So do you have any examples, sort of, in your head, case studies, stories of, of, the impact that you've found when, when people have been going through something like a PG cap? I do I do have a couple. Um, I know of someone a few years ago who did a teacher training course um, in, in higher education and started teaching his, the, his subject. But it wasn't long before that, before he was approached to become head of department. 
uh, and then start and then found that actually that was his vocation even though he was a good at teaching he was a better manager right and is now um, a head of faculty somewhere so and that was just a few years ago so I and, and that's just not not just one but this has happened to a few people where they've realized that education not necessarily teaching is for them but education is for them and that's their passion they've moved into different routes and I guess when they get to that management level, they're then able to support colleagues as part of their teams to, to engage with learning and teaching development. Very much so, because once you're a passionate teacher, I think you're a passionate teacher. So where if you move into management, you've got the best manager there, because mm-hmm. they're going to support the teachers and therefore support the students yeah. and, and understand teaching and learning. Uh, so that's one. I do have another one that's a little bit of a different route. Um, I have a lady who completed it who was very underconfident to begin with, in, in fact didn't want to come to class, was quite teary at times, didn't think she could do it uh, and her confidence was just immense by the time she'd finished it. Cool. But then a year later she was delivering at Advanced HE conference, she was disseminating wow. at, at, at an international conference in Milan um, and her life has just taken off um, exponentially really that's brilliant from you know from starting out from yeah. being so worried about it yeah I'd love to hear that brilliant thanks Judith there's lots of really interesting nuggets within um, that conversation we really like to end each podcast um, talking about three or four kind of take-home tips that you'd like to recommend um, to the listeners to help them to kind of reflect maybe on their own personal practice uh, um, I may have mentioned it before, I think one of the main ones, and this is for anybody that works in education really, especially teachers, but is to get to know your students. Get to know who they are, because one of the main things, you know, their backgrounds, what they're interested in. I know it's very hard when you've got 400 in a lecture theatre, but if you can find as much information about them and the type of learner they are. Um, but because, you know, student, as I said, students are changing, but it will make both your experiences much better. Okay. Um, I think that one of the other things in is is if you are a teacher, why wouldn't you want to do a teaching qualification? Just reflect on that and think about it. What made you come into teaching in the first place? Is it about this? If it's about the students and about the student experience, then you will learn a lot, a lot from it. And like I said before, it's not just about who's teaching you. You learn from everybody else, all your colleagues in the group. Um, and, and remember that anybody in the group is from across the university, so you're making networks across the university. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, that's really important. Um, from that, you could, uh, if, you, if you're really interested in education, like I said, you could, you could continue from the PG cap and into a PG dip and into a master's. So it gives you more of a broad experience of education and not just teaching. And also, you know, Advance HE and HA talk about remaining in good standing. So from having an associate fellowship, why not moving to a teaching qualification or get fellowship? And from that, we should then be talking about what next? Let's let's think about senior fellow. You know, what can you do towards senior fellow? How can you support that? How can you look at different case studies um, and, and push them forward? Because this is an, a door opening. You know, a lot of people in the past have seen a teacher qualification as, right, done that, tick, finished. But it's a door opening to many other things. So it's just reflecting on the reasons why they want to do it and, and what they might gain from it. Brilliant. Thank Good. you. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thanks Thank for coming you. in. So it was great to hear from Judith there. Um, one one little takeaway that I had there was, I mean, it was really interesting uh, to hear about how engaging in a programme that results in teaching recognition has a, a significant impact on academics practice with students in terms of their confidence and their professional practice. 
Yeah, I think you're right. And I think um, one thing that Judith really reminded me of is actually the value of engaging in courses now to support teaching recognition. The sector's definitely changed with things like the NSS and student expectations, other metrics. Co colleagues' ability to teach effectively has received increased importance. And it seems from what Judith's saying, there's a whole range of different routes here at the institution that will support colleagues in terms of their continuing professional practice and gaining that important teaching recognition. If you'd like to take um, any of this discussion further, um, we've put some resources that might help you in terms of thinking through um, how you might want to develop your reflections in terms of what Judith said. Um, these are all on the website liverpool.ac.uk forward slash the hyphen academy forward slash podcast. Do have a look on those reading lists for um, various um, different resources. Also do let us know what you thought of the conversation today. Um, give us your feedback on Twitter at Live Uni Academy. Yeah and if you can please rate and review in Apple Podcasts or simply subscribe to platforms such as Spotify, Google Podcasts or even YouTube. Bye for now.